hello. So I wanted to talk today about um, the tarot itself and, and why it works and what we're doing with it and why it could be explained today. So what's the power of a tarot reading? A tarot reading is um, a way to find answers that we didn't see before. I could have a, I could have a question and um, not have an idea for an answer. And I could apply a tarot reading and get ideas that I would have never thought of before. And if I follow through on those ideas and they work, then I've made an accurate prediction. And one of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these cards and say, how could a deck of cards do that? I didn't have an answer for this. And I would have never thought, thinking of my own, I could have never figured it out. But I, innovation, innovative uh, thinking, the tarot gave me an idea that I would have never thought of before. And I followed through on this idea and it, and it panned out. So it's a real strong illusion to look at these cards and say, how can a deck of cards do that? It's an it's a unintentional misdirection. The cards never did it. It's the application, the way I use the cards that did it. And that's, that mystery can be explained today. We've always had a, a real, um, vague understanding of why why this worked. Actually, we, we always admitted we, we didn't know why it worked. From jean Baptiste Alliette in the 1700s said to find out how this worked. He's the first professional tarot reader on record, by the way. jean Baptiste Alliette went by Attila, the name Attila. And he said in his first book, to discover how this worked, would be like finding a needle in a heap of hay. <laughs> That's the way he put it. In other words, we don't know why. And um, so that's always been the biggest mystery. Um, Pappas, uh, Dr. Anko say, he said the same thing a hundred years later in Tarot of the Bohemians. Starts his second paragraph of his preface. He says, the key to its application and construction has not yet been revealed so far as I know. In other words, basically saying, we don't know why it works. Eden Gray um, in 1970, Complete Guide to the Tarot. She says in that book, for some reason that we don't yet understand, the cards seem to shuffle themselves, but only after you've learned them fluently or something like that, she says. The key there is for some reason that we don't yet understand. So basically saying we don't, we don't know why. And this has always been the biggest mystery of the tarot. Today that could be explained. And, um, and that's why I started writing books about it. I came across this groundbreaking revelation on why the tarot works that I had to start writing about it. And my, uh, I was a professional reader, no intentions on writing a book. And I came across this, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have to write about it. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Because understanding why this works puts a clarity on what we're doing with it in such a way that we never had before. And it makes it a lot easier to understand what you're doing. And it also gives us the ability for the first time in their history to improve it. We've never improved the tarot. We've never improved the application. The application has been the same for centuries. We're using the same application John Baptiste Dalliette used in the 1700s as we as we that's what we do today. We make a card spread, we place cards in those positions, and we interpret them. And that's what we do. And um, and we've never um, questioned anything about that. Now I never believed that the tarot had the ability to tell me answers to begin with. I mean, I started reading the tarot in 1969 and um, 
I, I always felt there's got to be something to it we just don't see yet. Like a deck of cards telling me answers or spirits flying around rearranging the cards for me, something I just can't, I couldn't buy. I just couldn't do it. I knew that it worked, just like Aliette said. For some, I know it works, but why, I can't, I can't explain. And um, I felt the same way. It's like a card trick. I figured it was uh, something going on here that I just, I'm not seeing. Something's missing. And so when I saw this and it came, I came across this revelation, maybe that's why I saw it when, I, when, I, when it was in front of me, because I never really bought it anyway, that it's just unexplainable. And it's so clear, it's so, it, it's so simple now that... Um, my my goal now is to let you see it too and that's what i've been trying to do <laughs> the mindset of the tarot is so strong centuries old that it's a mysterious deck of cards and that's something you, you i have to um cross over because um that's that's a very strong mindset centuries old and to say that it's not a mysterious deck of cards anymore. Wow. But what's nice about it is that now we now that we understand why it works, it can be it can be improved. I said I got in the, I got involved with the tarot in 1969. And um, if we take a look at psychology and we take a look at the tarot from that time to now. 90% of what we know about the mind with psychology, we've only learned in the last 35 years or so. So psychology has moved in quantum leaps compared to the tarot. The tarot hasn't moved at all because we don't understand why it works. You can't improve something if you don't understand why it works. So all we've been able to do is mimic certain specific procedures that we know gets results in some way. And the only thing that's really evolved with the tarot is the cards themselves. When I first started reading, there was the Marseille deck. A year later, they came out with uh, the one JJ Swiss. And I think that same year, 1970, they came out with the Rider White deck again, put it back out in circulation, and it took off like crazy. But um, that was another confirmation for me. But if this symbolism and these cards are supposed to be so um, important, how could we just come out with another deck and see pro readers using something like the Rider Weight and getting doing just as good a reading as you can with a Marseille deck? That shows you that there's something different. It's not just the cards. It's a whole different image on these cards. And all we ever did with the cards is just look at these cards under a microscope trying to find the answer. We've looked at everything about the cards, all these different decks. Now there's hundreds of different decks out there. And there's people using all of them. And their readings are just as good as anybody else's. So whether you're using this deck over here or this deck over there, two readers, both successful readers using two different decks. Um, and they're, and it's, it's working well for them. So it's just a preference on what you like. Also, the meanings of the cards have changed over time. I wrote Bare Bones Tarot, and I put that in here, how the cards have changed over time. So in this book, for each card, I have the meanings for present day. But I also have the meanings that were there for 1980. And I have the meanings that were there for 1960. And you look at the meanings and how they've changed over time. There were successful readers in the 60s. There were successful readers in the 80s. And there are successful readers today. So the meanings of these cards have changed over time. The tarot changes as society changes. And, um, and that's what's happened here. So these cards are, they're a great source and they're, they're very important in obviously doing a tarot reading, but there's something else that we're missing still with this. 
And that's what we now can understand that we can, we can explain. I mentioned psychology because 1969, like I said, psychology from then to now is a whole different thing. And um, so if we look at those two and we see that psychology has progressed so much and tarot hasn't done anything, it's because we understood enough about psychology to be able to build on it. So the power of the tarot, yeah, it allows us to find answers that we didn't see before and get ideas that we didn't see before. And an idea is a prediction because you haven't done it yet. And it works. It's a very effective way to do it. So anyway, I say I talk about psychology here. Psychology today can explain and it understands why a tarot reading works. They couldn't do this in 1969, but they can do it today. Psychology knows the mechanics and what is happening with this application. And they use it in ways that the tarot reader hasn't even progressed. The tarot reader is still down here. Psychology has taken this application. It's all based on the way the mind thinks anyway. And today is con considered a creative thinking technique, and that's what it is. And psychology has taken this and refined it so much that we're not, they're not just looking at things like we looked into as, as tarot readers. They're using this technique, the same identical technique as a tarot reading. They're using it in medicine in science, in technology, in the arts. Branches of our government use it. All the Fortune 500 companies use it. Inventors use it. And it's, an, it's a direct application of thinking. And it's called a creative thinking technique. And it specifically is a creative thinking technique called conceptual blending. And I've talked about this in other videos, but I'm saying it again. And trying to be, trying to come up with a ways to teach something that's never been taught before creates a challenge. And my, my challenge is really overcome, getting you to overcome the, um, or see it, putting aside the centuries old mindset that the tarot cards are what we've always thought they were. They're, they're not. So the mystery of the tarot. Um, the power of the tarot. The biggest mystery of the tarot is, is how does it work? And that mystery has never been in the cards. We keep looking at those cards, but that's not where it's at. The mystery has been in the application. That's why it works, it's the application. And I just said that um, all these other places are using the same exact technique but you i'm not saying that they're using tarot cards they might but when you understand this application you realize that you could use it with anything in your world anything surrounding you anything in your world around you so the tarot reader limits their a set of ideas or their source of ideas to 78 cards where people that understand this practice in a broader sense, in a psychological sense, realize that you could use anything in the world around you instead of a deck of cards and get the, get the same results. I prefer using a deck of tarot cards. So do you probably, because you're here looking at this video. <laughs> and it's a wonderful way to do it. You could use anything, pages in a, a word in a book, or um, anything in the room around you, uh, brainstorming, they call that. Uh, just anything surrounding you right now, you pick it up, think, think about it, and use it in some way that will be helpful. And that's what we're doing when we read tarot cards. We're using the random tarot cards that we see in the reading. So yeah, they've, they've, they've taken this application that we've been using for centuries as a tarot reading 
And it's the same exact application. And here's what the application is. You break the question apart into sections. In order to analyze any question, you have to fragment the question. You have to break it apart and look at it in specific sections. And that's what a card spread is. And we don't really think much about a card spread because you never see it on the table. We just see the cards that are laid into it. But a card spread is very important. It's the, the rational side of the question or the rational side of the look at the question. It's the factors that we're looking into that we think are important to address in this question we're looking for an answer for. And the cards that are placed into those positions are the possible answers to the question, to the position it's placed into. Today, that's called conceptual blending. Taking a randomness of some type and adding it to a section of our question and making associations between the randomness and where it's placed in the question, what elements does this randomness have? Does, what attributes does it have? What purpose? Is any of this helpful in finding some way to use it in my question? Can any of these things about this randomness be helpful in answering this particular part of my question? It forces me to use my imagination because this randomness that's placed there has nothing at all to do with the question we're looking into. So now we're forced to use our imagination to make a connection with that. A tarot card has nothing to do with my question. I'm forcing a connection as a tarot reader. I'm forcing it. And I'm making an interpretation with that. Whether metaphorically or some other way, I'm find, trying to find useful information from that card. And that is conceptual blending. The value of this is anything that's ever been invented was done by adding something we're totally familiar with, but has nothing at all to do with our question, adding it to our question and making associations between this random thing and the element of the question it's placed with. And I've shown examples of... Uh, this, but to say one again was um, Lewis Braille. Lewis Braille discovered the idea of Braille for the blind by looking at a pine cone. Feeling the pine cone, feeling the touching it, he was blind himself, and he was thinking about reading books again, he wishes he could read books. He picked, he touched in this pine cone, and he's thinking, what, what if they put points on paper in different patterns that could be letters could be touched instead of have to be seen. So if you look at that, that association and say, um, well, if you look at it rationally, you say, well, how can the blind read books? Well, what about this pine cone? Well, that would be, wouldn't make any sense to you. You're using your learned thinking instead of your imagination. And using this side of the mind, the, the right brain, this imagination, this creative side is also where your intuition is. So the more you read tarot cards, the more you're going to start to develop your intuition as well, because you're using that part of your mind more. So you're developing it. Just like anything else you do, the more you do it, the, the body will get better at it, including the mind. And you'll start to get ideas and feelings about things that you don't know where they're coming from. So it does help your psychic awareness. Now, intuition, we still don't know anything about intuition. But we're still in the dark ages with that. But psychology now has taken this, this way of thinking and refined it and put it into a science and a study and explains why it works now. And we didn't do that when I was first getting involved with tarot cards. They didn't understand any of that. I mean, they had ideas about it, but they didn't really have it down like they do today. And they're still, like I said, they're still looking into it. 
They're still trying to refine it. The term conceptual blending did not even become a, an official term in psychology until 1993. So we are in the, in the time right now of, of learning more about the mind. We, are, we know enough about the mind to realize that, oh, okay, this is why a tarot reading works. Because now we know how to come up with ideas. We know that the mind works this way, a certain way. And we can come up with new ideas that we never thought of before. Today, that's known as conceptual blending. And you could take college courses on it now. So it's not mysterious. It's, it's, it can be explained. And this is why the tarot reading is so effective. Any new idea you get is a prediction. So you want to call it looking into the future? Fine. You want to call it making plans or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Still to be done. People say to me, what do you do? I say, I make predictions. Things that are going to happen in the future if you do this and if you do this. This looks like the way you're going to be going. That's a prediction. Understanding the value of this this application and and um, what that does to this, for the tarot reader, it allows us for the first time in the history of the tarot to improve this application. Nobody's ever questioned the procedures that are in place for a tarot reading and um, or how we approach a tarot reading or how we use tarot cards, basically. Nobody's ever questioned that. Or used this way, or this is the way you lay the cards out. And this is the order you put them in. And you use reverse meanings, or you don't use reverse meanings. Or this card means specifically this. Or we've, we've, we've um, structured things too much in, in ways that really don't, aren't that important. When you understand this is why it works, and you're learning tarot cards and you understand why it works and you realize then, then it puts the, the tarot cards in it in a place where it makes sense as far as their value in this whole application of thinking and what we're doing and what we're really doing so now you know what they are they're a deck of 78 ideas and these ideas, once they're learned by the reader, are randomly placed in the sections of a question known as a card spread. And then they're interpreted some way by that reader to make sense to fit into that section of the question they've been randomly placed into in a way that would be useful to the seeker that we're reading for. This identical application of thinking called creative thinking and conceptual blending is common practice now in many disciplines. And, and um, like I said, it's in medicine, science, and in all sorts of other places. So psychology has taken from 69, when I started reading tarot cards, psychology has taken ways to find answers to things that we don't have answers to and surpass the tarot in ways that it, they're, they're left us in the dust. Because we were working this, this system in a way not knowing why, why this worked. And as a lot in, in psychology with the creative thinking that probably I don't even care if, if the tarot is used that way or not, because they can do so much more in finding answers than we're even, we've even thought about. Now, 200 years ago, tarot readers were, some, or, uh, they were requested by actual world leaders to find answers. People in power Today, people in power will use a creative consultant. 
And the tarot reader has been pretty much just used as a personal one-on-one -on -one with people. And it's more personal issues now, which is fine. But this procedure has a lot of value. And as a reader, you start to realize, okay, I can find answers from just from things in this room too. That helps you as a reader too. Yeah, you're reading the tarot cards. But maybe I see something, maybe she's wearing something around her neck that interests me. And I'm, I start to interpret that into her reading or something else in the room. And you can start doing that. And you will start doing it because you're just going to get ideas. It will be coming to you. And like I said, the more you read, the more intuitive you become. So the tarot reading can be now be explained with conclusive and verifiable facts and our knowledge. It's a very powerful procedure. It's an intentional approach to a question. Adding a random stimulus to elements of our question and interpreting them in some useful way to find an answer we didn't see before is now defined as conceptual blending and it's a creative thinking technique. Whether or not a tarot reader does the same thing or not, it's fine, you know, you know but who's really using this system is not the tarot reader. Tarot reader uses it, but nowhere near at the extent or the, or the, the magnitude that's being used throughout the world in, in other ways. By think tanks, by creative consultants, and huge projects. So if you understand this, and I go into it in bare bones, I go into it in uh, essential tarot, I even go into it in radical tarot. But, um, now the tarot can be explained. The centuries old mystery of the tarot working is not divination. Divination means it's something from divine is helping us. It's coming from our own minds. Just the way we're using our mind. Our next Zoom meeting is the 25th of October, 12 o'clock Chicago time, noon tarotmaps.com, a link down below. And um, so I hope you like this. Keep throwing cards. We'll talk soon.